Do you think Bioware knew what they were doing to the people of the internet when they unleashed Garrus Vicarian onto the world? Did they know the unbelievable standards that they were creating? Ahoy everyone, welcome to the Strawberry Seaside. I'm your captain, Sailor B, and this week is another episode of Overcaffeinated Craft Time. This is the series where I, your resident coffee addict, pick a topic or character I've been fixated on and make a plushie related to it to try to get the dang thing out of my head. The next installment in this series is all about your favorite alien boyfriend and mine, Garrus Vicarian from the Mass Effect video game series. So if you watched my Good Omens video, the story of this plushie's pattern is the same nonsense as that one. If you didn't see that video, I first found this pattern 10 years ago when I was in high school and first learned how to crochet and was in the middle of playing the games. I found this pattern in my old computer recently and for some reason back then I used to just copy and paste only the pattern. No materials, no pictures, no links, nothing. Just the text into a Word document and would save it to my computer that way? When I decided to do this video, I was a little worried I wouldn't be able to find the original again since I remade the plush using my old document, but thankfully I recognized it by the cute felt face details. With all that being said, and my high school self's stupid method of pattern saving aside, this pattern is by I Should Go for free on Ravelry and will be linked in the description below. For this plushie, while I use random yarn from my collection, I would recommend Impeccable Solid Yarn by Loops and Thread in Clear Blue, Classic Grey, and Thunder, and Bernat Super Value Solid Yarn in Topaz. Both are available at Michael's and are linked below, but if you're able to buy the same or similar yarn at a local small business, I always recommend doing that instead. Just a quick little disclaimer before we start. For a lot of the research that I was able to do for this video, the sources talked primarily in cis heteronormative language. So while obviously not everyone who's attracted to Garrus is a woman, that was how a lot of the sources discussed the topic. So just take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt in that regard. As a queer person myself, just wanted to give you folks a heads up. Also, as there's a good amount of opinions in this video, just remember all the opinions expressed here are mine and you by no means have to feel the same way as I do about anything. There's also slight spoilers ahead. With all that housekeeping out of the way, let's get on with the show. Garrus Vicarian was first introduced in the first Mass Effect game, which first came out in 2007. Garrus is a Turian, a militaristic race of aliens from the planet Palavin. He joins Commander Shepard's crew on the Normandy as a gunnery officer. Commander Shepard, Garrus Vicarian. I was the officer in charge of the CSEC investigation into Saren. Sounds like you really want to bring him down. I don't trust him. Something about him rubs me the wrong way. But he's a specter. Everything he touches is classified. I can't find any hard evidence. I think the Council's ready for us, Commander. Good luck, Shepard. He's a great companion for Shepard, and is a quick-witted and geeky little guy. He wasn't romanceable in the first game of the series, which is truly a crime. The first game had limited options in that regard in general, but would become a potential partner for Femshep in the second game onwards. In the second game, after the events of Mass Effect 1, Garrus has gone rogue and become a mercenary on the planet Omega, where he terrorizes criminals there with his mercenary group. And of course, now that Garrus is a potential boyfriend for Femship, they felt the need to give our boy a sexy face scar. Commander, we've done what we could for Garrus, but he took a bad hit. The doc's corrected with surgical procedures and some cybernetics. Best we can tell, he'll have full functionality, but... Shepard? <laughs> Tough son of a bitch. Didn't think he'd be up yet. Nobody would give me a mirror. How bad is it? Hell, Garrus, you were always ugly. Slap some face paint on there and no one will even notice. <laughs> oh, oh, don't make me laugh. Damn it, my face is barely holding together as it is. Some women find facial scars attractive. Mind you, most of those women are crooked. This... This had to be intentional, right? You cannot tell me otherwise. 
By the third game, Shepard and Garrus are incredibly close, whether you romanced him or not. While I really do not want to talk about the ending of Mass Effect 3 right now, for obvious reasons, he does give one of my personal favorite emotional moments in gaming, period, in this game. James told me there's an old saying here on Earth. May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Not sure if Torian heaven is the same as yours, but if this thing goes sideways and we both end up there, meet me at the bar. I'm by. We're a team, Garrus. There's no Shepard without Vicarian. So you better remember to duck. Sorry, Torians don't know how, but I'll improvise. And Shepard, forgive the insubordination, but your boyfriend has an order for you. Come back alive. It'd be an awfully empty galaxy without you. Goodbye, Garrus. And if I'm up there in that bar and you're not, I'll be looking down. You'll never be alone. Never. When I first played Mass Effect, I was in the 9th or 10th grade in high school, and I still thought I was straight at the time. So when I began my intergalactic journey aboard the Normandy, I of course romanced Caden. Now, don't get me wrong. I liked Caden. I think he's an interesting character, and I enjoyed the romantic storyline. Can't just pull out a good old fashioned, it'll be all right, can you? It's that easy, huh? Okay then. Everything will be fine, Shepard. You'll figure it out. That wasn't so hard, now was it? I could get used to it. I guess we have some downtime to figure out what we are. Huh? Sorry to interrupt, Commander. Got a message from Captain Anderson. I played through the whole game trilogy with him. <laughs> Granted, when playing as Femshep and being quote-unquote straight, Caden is your only option in ME1, and I'm nothing if not loyal. That being said, when I came back for a second playthrough a year or so later, after seeing all the hype in the online fandom around Garrus and not really getting it, I decided I'd romance him instead this time. To say that Garrus is a beloved character I think would be the understatement of the century. According to sources, Garrus is the most popular heterosexual romance in the game, the sixth most popular romance overall, and is often cited as the most popular Mass Effect character, period. I love researching topics like this because it's always really funny to me how confused a lot of men on the internet get when they see these types of characters become incredibly popular with women. It reminds me of how there were countless think pieces on why women were so into Loki when Thor was right there and considered to be the more attractive of the two. Even though, as I'm sure most people who exist on the internet are aware, Loki had and still has a significantly larger fan base who wanted to smooch him compared to Thor. Not saying that there wasn't people who wanted to give Thor a big old kiss as well, he just definitely was the less popular brother. The same can be said for Garrus. When researching for this video, I found dozens of articles completely puzzled about why women were into Garrus so much. I even found one made by a woman herself who said that she thought it was weird that there were so many women that wanted to romance Garrus. Of course, this is a completely valid opinion, not saying that you have to be attracted to the weird alien man, that would be silly to expect that he's everyone's type. But I think it really goes to show that for a lot of women, especially those who engage in the sci-fi and fantasy genre, your looks are really low on the list of priorities when it comes to who's considered an attractive character. Garrus is interesting. He's charismatic, he's intelligent, he's a little bit dangerous and a little bit reckless, but he's very caring and passionate. I can completely understand why you yourself might not like him but it's not really a stretch why others would, in my opinion. One article that interviewed women on why they love Garrus included the following on the list. He's a good guy. He's a friend to Shepard first. He's hot. 
he's vulnerable, he's cutely awkward, he's confident, he's charming, and of course, just his voice. <laughs> My personal favorite from this list are his hips, alien equal hot, and one of my favorite scenes in the romance storyline, he, well, he researches how to uh, get down with you. I don't want something closer to home. I want you. I want someone I can trust. I can do that. I'll find some music and do some research to figure out how this thing should work. It'll either be a night to treasure or a horrible interspecies awkwardness thing. Do people love Garrus just because some people are into aliens? Of course. But I believe he genuinely embodies a lot of what women look for in a man. And just because it all happens to come in a Turian-shaped package doesn't necessarily have to play into it. He's this weird bird dinosaur man with a snatched waist and gangly arms, but his confidence kindness and devotion to us the player is much more important than any of that. I genuinely think Garrus deserves to be up there with the like of Mr. Darcy for giving us all such lofty standards for our romantic partners. And there, he is complete. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, hit that bell, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you'd like to see more of my cuddly creations coming soon to the Strawberry Seaside. I will also be uploading the chill out version later this week, a slightly longer version of this video that is just the visuals and music if you just want to watch the sewing process and vibe. Link to the pattern and materials I used, my references as well as my website are all in the description below. Thanks again, smooth sailing and fair winds to ya.